Good morning from Venice, Italy. I am Ashley and welcome to The Way Away. Today I'm doing something very iconic here in Venice. When you think of Venice, what do you think of? Like, what's the first thing you think of? I'm pretty sure it's the gondolas. And today I'm gonna learn how to drive one. Is that what it's called? <laughs> Let's go. The seagull thought it was funny. Jordan. Jordan and I are traveling together for the next week and we decided to spend 85 euro on doing this experience where we learn how to row these boats instead of doing the $80 experience for half an hour. We are headed to a marina right now to find the person that's going to show us how to row a gondola. So to be clear, a gondola like this where you ride it down inside all these little twists and turns. They're 80 euro for 35 minutes. And then after 7 p.m. it goes up to 85 euro for like a few more minutes. So that price is for the whole boat. You can have up to five people in the boat and it's standard all across Venice. So you're gonna find the same price everywhere you go. But we decided to do this experience, which is the same price, but it's an hour and a half versus just half an hour. We'll see, I have no idea if it's through little canals like this, but I'm hoping that's the experience we get. Although, I may run into the side of a building. <laughs> made on wood walnut and only for Venetian style rowing, so pushing forward. Because if you pull backwards, like an English style, a normal rowing style, <laughs> of course the oar will jump out, yeah. because the hole is open. But here in Venice, in the narrow canals, we can't have the oar locked, because if there is no space to row, to row we have to put the oar inside in the boat. I see. It can't be. Yeah. Is it true that normally those are made per rower? Like yeah, for exactly. your height and for exactly. okay, oh, yeah. wow. when we race, we have our personal oar look, personal oar, yeah. and of course it depends also of the boat. Okay. If you have another kind of boat, you need another kind of oar look. And you carry your own oar lock wherever you go, whatever boat you can take it and then put it in. That's, That's so cool. cool. You can try one at a time back. and then we go. She's doing all the work. <laughs> she gave us a whole rundown when we came. And so we're supposed to be rowing this boat. Although I'm not convinced I'm doing anything. <laughs> Normally, on the gondolas I've seen, they only have one person in the back. The orbic uh, farther out on the right. And uh, does my right hand go to the end here? Yeah, more or less. Yeah, yeah. okay. We've come out to the middle of the lagoon and our guide is showing us how to navigate or steer this long boat. These boats are fairly stable because the bottom of it is very flat. And then we are also in a lagoon. She's stuck the oar into the ground and it was like, I don't know, maybe up to my waist. Uh, the water right here is not very deep at all. I was very surprised by that. lattes at a cute little coffee shop. Fun fact, if you order a latte in um, Italy, normally you'll just get a glass of milk or a cup of milk, which is what I did when I was at the airport leaving Italy last time. But this place, they actually put coffee in their lattes. 
So let's tell her about the tour we just went on. It was really fun. She started out by giving us a ton of information about the boat, the boat specifically that we were in. She said they used to use as the ambulance boat because they're very steady. The bottom of the boat is super flat. And so when you're in waves and stuff, it keeps it fairly even keel, which is helpful for me because I'm one of those people that get motion sickness. We went out into the lagoon and there were a lot of waves and I felt fairly okay. <laughs> I didn't get too sick and as beginners, like sea legs is a thing. I don't know how to stay like stable on a boat very well. So it was very helpful that the boat was not rocking back and forth. We moved on to a small little bar to get a platter of chicken, which are these tiny little sandwiches with different flavors. This one has octopus, this one's I think tuna. It smells very fishy. <laughs> I think there are many fish flavors. We're gonna give them a go and try them out. These would be like the equivalent of Italian tapas, but the chicken, not tapas. Don't make that mistake. I figured I'd go for the craziest one in my opinion first. This is a little octopus on here. Some of you may not like this, but it's not right, I'm gonna go for it. It's really good. The octopus is so soft. And the tomato complements it really, really well. It's a little bit messy. Also, for three euro, I was able to get an Aperol spritz, which is so cheap for this big of a glass. And it is one of my favorite cocktails. Usually, a spritz would be like Aperol, which is a liqueur, and then added in with Prosecco. Sometimes they put an orange in it or olives. But it's super refreshing. So far, I like them all except for one. Now this one looks like the king though because it has little shrimps on it and I do love shrimp. Give it a go. Enjoy this side. Mmm, a little almond. I love these small bite-sized things where you can try tons of different flavors and enjoy yourself just seeing which ones you like and which ones you don't. I loved the most of all this tour was that I could ask questions. Something that I had heard prior was that there is this thing that is specifically made for each gondolier. It's made out of wood and it's specific to their height and weight specifically also to the person. So you can go and have these made. They're called or locks. <laughs> it is um, something that you can take out of each boat that you're in and just carry with you. Many of the gondoliers, they have their very own that's made specifically to them. If you are a racer, which our guide is a racer, so she said that there are specific things you can do to your or lock to make you faster and a better racer. Um, you just have to figure out what's best for you because sometimes it's good for you, but not good for someone else, you know? So it's a really cool thing that's specific to each one of them. I find that so fascinating and like super cool. Now that I've had my lesson, I feel like a gondolier critic. <laughs> While well, they're rowing, I know what they're doing and I know what to look for. Which is so funny because before I had no understanding of what it takes or how they steer the boat. But now I have way more of an understanding and it's so fun to be able to look and see what they're doing and how they're doing it with the knowledge behind it. It's a fun way to appreciate such a touristic thing a little bit more. of going on a gondola tour today, I did look up some information that was helpful for me to appreciate my experience just a little bit more, as well as I was able to ask my guides some of the questions that I had while I was looking up information. What I found was that in the 17th century, here in Venice and the surrounding areas, there were around 10,000 gondoliers. Now, in this day and age, there are only around 500. That's a very big difference, and a lot of them now work for tourists, whereas before, they were used for transport. The traditional gondolas, there used to be around 60 boat builders here in Venice. Now, there are only two. It takes about three months to build one of these 
big, beautiful gondolas, and they're made with seven different kinds of wood. Each gondola is made from scratch and has around 280 pieces that create this gondola. There are seven layers of paint on each gondola, and these boats can last up to 50 years if taken care of properly. When you purchase a gondola, say you wanted to buy one, which you can, <laughs> they can cost up to $35,000. Okay, so let's say you decided to buy your own gondola and you wanted to take good care of it. Five times a year, you would have to be sure to get the bottom cleaned of all the algae that grows on it. You'd also, once a year, need to get the paint it repainted and then every five years you want to replace the whole bottom of the gondola. On the front of most of the traditional gondolas you can see a silver piece. On this piece there are six prongs on the very front. Each one of these little prongs is representative of the six neighborhoods here in Venice. On the opposite side you'll see one little prong that's on its lonesome. That is a neighborhood that was added to the city later on. There's also the round piece at the top which is supposed to be representative of the hat that the leader used to wear here in Venice. A very, very fun historical thing that I love knowing because it gives I don't know, things like that, a little more significance, and I enjoy learning them. This morning I asked my tour guide, what does it take to become a gondolier? And she said I wasn't too far off. The things that we did this morning are part of the test to become a gondolier. You need to learn how to navigate the boat from the front, which is the easier portion, and you take the oar out of the water, and then you have to do the test on the back, which not so easy, and the ore does not leave the water. And exactly what these gondoliers are doing here, where they're the only ones navigating these boats. And then they need to do a written test. There are rules on the water, as well as they need to be sure that they can navigate all the small, tiny little alleys and the canals <laughs> within the city of Venice. Okay, that is it. Second day in Venice, done and dusted. I hope that you guys all enjoyed learning a little bit more about the gondolas. For me, this was a great experience in Venice and I have so much more of appreciation for something that just seemed so touristic and not necessarily something I wanted to do, but then I was able to find a way to do it that gave me experience, knowledge, and more of appreciation for it. And I hope I was able to share that with all of you. But for now, I'm gonna go, maybe have some pasta and some wine and call it a day. I hope you enjoyed this video. Be sure to subscribe and I will hopefully see you in the next one. All right, ciao.